Merry Christmas. Today is the third day of Christmas. We still have many more days to go, many more days to wish each other a Merry Christmas. Um, Pastor and Judy Smith are not here today. It's because they're in Wisconsin where their son Tim and his wife Heidi will be married uh, this afternoon. So we're very happy for Pastor and Judy and, and wish them a joyous day. Um, there's no Monday night service this week, uh, but there is Thursday night at 7 for New Year's Eve. So take note of that. And there will also be Bible study tonight, and I'll send out a link um, after church. You can now turn and greet your brothers and sisters. Lord, to our 
us the Christ is born. Christ is born. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. The splendor and majesty provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and all those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever.
reading from Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself, like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. And you shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Luke chapter 2. We read together. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that the thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew up and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your Merry Christmas. God's peace be to you. You may be seated. Peace. Peace is such a common word at this time of year. But what does it mean? Among the Jewish people, peace is a relationship word. It refers to a whole relationship, a healthy relationship, where nothing stands between the two people. When there's nothing separating the two, there is peace. And when there's not peace, well, it takes forgiveness 
to create peace, which is what God the Father does by sending us his Son. God has reconciled us to himself, making peace by the blood of the cross. Yes, you have peace with God through your Lord Jesus Christ. The angels sing of it. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Peace through the child who is the prince of peace. On Christmas, Isaiah told us to publish peace, to publish salvation. For peace and salvation are almost synonyms. And today, Simeon sings of peace. You see, Simeon had been promised that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Christ. And after holding baby Jesus, he says, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Peace and salvation. Because Jesus saves his people from their sins, those sins which would have separated us from God, there is now nothing separating us. There is now no condemnation, and therefore we have peace with him forever. Such good news. However, <clears throat> there is another side to all this, because peace with God also makes you an enemy of the devil and an enemy of the world. Just because we have peace with God does not mean that we always experience peaceful times. Just because we have peace with God does not mean that we always feel peaceful. And it certainly doesn't mean that you have peace with worldly people. For Jesus says plainly, the world will hate you. So while we have peace in this relationship, and perhaps among our fellow Christians, Jesus says that we will not have peace in the world, nor peace with Satan. For we belong to Christ, the one who was deeply despised and rejected. And if that's how they treated our master, how will they treat the servants? Peace with God brings conflict in other areas. So, right after speaking about peace, Simeon warns us, Behold, this child is appointed for the falling and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. Jesus will be opposed. In fact, Jesus is the most divisive person in all human history. For he truly divides all people into two groups. He divides all into those who receive him and those who don't, those who trust him and those who don't, those who love him and cherish his word, and those who simply don't. For this child has been appointed to judge the living and the dead, and all shall either fall or rise because of him. Consider those words, falling and rising, truly opposites. In order to fall, you must already be standing. No one can fall if he's lying on the ground. You must already be up in order to go down. And on the flip side, rising can only happen if you are down. Only those who are broken on the floor can rise. You must start low. And these two words perfectly describe the two possibilities of a person's relationship with Jesus. You see, some people are self-righteous, meaning that they think they are good. They think they stand. They think that they could stand before God at the judgment and be proud of how they've lived. Oh, they stand tall spiritually with their noses turned up at others in superiority. 
But the proud, they don't know what's coming. And Jesus has been appointed by God to make such people fall, to cut them down to size, to humble them, hopefully in this life, while there's still time for mercy. But if not, at the judgment. Oh, but there's still another type of person, and that's the humble, the humiliated, the lowly. Those who would not dare lift up their heads and boast, but simply beat their breast and say, God, be merciful to me. I am a sinner. These people know that they don't deserve a seat at the table, for they have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what they've done and left undone, and they cannot free themselves from their sinful condition. They are sort of like the old woman in those life alert commercials. I've fallen and I can't get up. They're pathetic. They're poor, miserable sinners. And Jesus has been appointed by God to make such people rise, to forgive them, to heal them, to cleanse them, to cover them with righteousness, and to invite them to sit in honor at his table. So, some must fall and some will rise. And every individual who has ever lived will be one of these two. There is no third way. Either Jesus will cast them out or Jesus will gather them in. For God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the lowly. This child has been appointed for the falling and rising of many in Israel. Friends, what Simeon is saying is this. All of life is headed towards judgment day. And the only thing that's going to matter is what is your relationship to the child? Do you have peace with him? If you know you're a sinner, if you love Jesus and his word, rejoice. You will be forgiven. You will rise. But if you don't think you're all that bad and you're sort of indifferent about his word, judgment will not go well for you. Therefore, I hope you're brought low soon, while there's still time, so that you might join us lowly people and receive grace. For some shall fall, some shall rise. But that's not all Simeon says. He then finally turns to Mary and says, and a sword will pierce your own soul as well. For Mary in particular, this foreshadows her own suffering, for she witnessed the crucifixion of her son. She was there at the foot of the cross, and she saw her Lord die. Being a disciple would be very painful for Mary. And the same is true for us. Perhaps because you speak your faith, you've lost a friend. Perhaps after expressing faith, you notice that you see the grandkids less. Perhaps because you follow Jesus, you are ridiculed at work or mocked by the world. It can happen in so many ways. But it's not all peace following Jesus, is it? The devil does not like you, nor those whom he is influencing. So a sword will pierce your own soul, for following the child hurts. And yet it will be worth it, for you have peace with God through your Lord Jesus Christ. Indeed, this child has been appointed for your rising. He has been appointed to wipe every tear from your eyes. He has been given the task by God to replace all your sorrows with joy on that final day and to seat you at the table where you will find countless brothers and sisters who will love you without end. In this world, you have tribulation, but take heart. 
He overcomes the world. He is the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome him. And soon he'll remove all your darkness from you, that you may dwell in his glorious light. Because of this Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Your guilt is gone. He gives grace to the lowly, and the meek will inherit the earth. So do not be anxious about anything, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. And the peace of God, the peace which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Peace be to you. Amen. We stand. You may be seated. At this time, we gather the offering.
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O God, our Maker and Redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, yet more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we may ever be alive in him who, is, who has made himself to be like us, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our congregation, for all our brothers and sisters that you've gathered in this place. And we ask that you would give us great joy and peace during this Christmas time. We especially pray for Barbara Klump, Eric, Patty, and Marissa Klump, Hildegard Klump, John Klump, and Carl and Barbara Klump and their family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we praise you this day because of the wedding of Tim and Heidi Smith this afternoon. We ask that you'd bless their marriage, that you'd give them increasing joy and happiness. And we also thank you for all of our marriages. We praise you for the wedding anniversaries of Pastor and Judy Smith and Pastor Elliot, Elliot and Valerie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for our nation, and we pray for all those in authority. We pray for our country, our state, our cities, and our communities, including Detroit. Be with all those who serve to protect us, including police and firefighters and doctors and nurses and emergency workers, that you would protect them as they protect us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the sick, for the suffering, for those who are hospitalized. We pray for Jim, Diane, David, Susan, Sue, all those who are on our prayer list, and all those we now name in our hearts. Heal them, Father, according to your will. And we also pray for those who are anxious or sorrowful at this time of year, who are depressed or struggling, and we ask that you'd grant them your peace, which transcends all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we also pray for the families who have lost loved ones, for the family of Grace Dusterhoff, the family of Fred Brandt, that you'd comfort all who mourn with the message of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. So defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.